let's go. <laughs> let's get into it here. Um, welcome everybody to uh, our annual select board meeting there for Monday, October 1st. A nice, wet, rainy day, um, 2018. We've got a fairly simple agenda here in front of us. And uh, first thing we need to do is approve the agenda. Is there any changes or additions before we do so? I'll make the motion that we approve the agenda as presented. Okay. I'll second that. All righty. Um, any questions or hearing none? Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Consent, consent agenda items are just the uh, minutes of September 17th meeting. If somebody would like to approve that, we can move ahead. I'll make the motion that we approve the uh, consent Agenda items, uh, the minutes of the September 17th meeting. Okay. Second that. All right, Matt, thanks. And um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Public. Uh, anybody from the public wish to speak at this time? Okay. Seeing none, uh, we'll move ahead to introduce the new library director. Hi, <laughs> Dan. Yeah. You want to? You can either go there. Yeah, I was going to say you can you go can there. You can come up here, both. whichever you feel more comfortable doing. Department of Libraries and has 10 years of experience as a library director in other towns in Vermont um, from 2010 to the current uh, to 2018 at the Fairfax Community Library and then before that um, the Montgomery Town Library from 2007 to 2010. Um, currently Almi's president of the, Ver of the public library section of the Vermont Library Association and we were very happy that to hear that she had led the Fairfax Community Library through their strategic planning process, which is a process we hope to start in the next few months. Um, so we look forward to updating the select board on programming and events happening at the library and the number of ways that the community is engaging with the library here in Waterbury. If you have any Thank questions you. for all me. <laughs> First question is, how do you spell that? Your name, please. First name? Yes. A-L-M-Y. Okay, all of <laughs> And do you live here in town? I do not. I live in Burlington currently. I, um, I've spent most of my adult life in Franklin County. Moved to Burlington about four years ago. So, um, is something, a position you've been looking for for a while, or? Um, I felt ready for some new challenges after being in Fairfax for about eight years. Yeah. So. This, was, this seemed like a good fit, and of course this beautiful facility was icing on the cake, so it's, I'm very happy to be here, and I sometimes pinch myself and say, wow, I get to work in this building. <laughs> so. um, married kids? I have two, I'm not married currently. I have two grown sons who are just about fully fledged. <laughs> they are both... Um, studying in graduate school for their uh, doctorates in engineering, which they get their math and science genes from the other side of the family. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more of a language person, as you might imagine. So. so you're prepared for the commute back and forth through the winter months? Yeah, it's actually a little bit shorter than <clears throat> going to Fairfax. Oh, really? It was, yeah. Which is good. Shorter's better than longer, so, yeah. Is there anybody else left in Fairfax now that you and Nick are here? I know. <laughs> she was my librarian. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> we emptied the town. <laughs> yeah, that was fun to make that connection when we first got here. Well, actually, uh, your friend who's the uh, 
the rec director in Fairfax is a friend of Nick's, and so he, he told me to look for you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Any other board, other board members have anything to add? No, I just uh, would want to welcome you. Thank uh, you. I, uh, we're excited to have you here. We're, uh, the community has been uh, very happy with the, with the new library arrangement and the programming that's been presented and really look forward to uh, what, what new aspects you'll bring to the program for us. Great. Well, on that note, I can just, I'll say a few words. Um, my short-term plans are really to get to know the staff the rest of the town employees, the community, um, the patrons over the next few months. And um, I've, been, I've been doing that and I've been reaching out a little bit to, and I plan to more, um, you know, the business community, the other organizations and nonprofits in town and in the area. Um, and I've brought some fresh ideas in both for the sort of the functionality side of the library as well as the patron side of the library. but. I'm going slow with and incremental with those types of changes until I've been here for a little bit longer and have gained the, the trust of the staff and gotten to know the patrons. Um, but as we move into the strategic plan and we do surveys and we reach out to the community and get feedback, hopefully there'll be an opportunity to uh, make some more impactful, uh, larger uh, changes that will help us uh, grow the services and meet the needs of the community as we move forward. That's good. Yeah. Welcome to our community. Thank you very much. Uh, the staff and the patrons have been very friendly and helpful, as have the, the rest of the town employees. So it's just delightful to be here. Herschel, you like to say something? Uh, yeah. Um, we, we've met two or three times yeah. already, <laughs> and all that's going well. But uh, I've observed from a long time ago in the library to now that. Uh, it seemed to me when we got this nice new facility that there was sort of still a mindset built and very excusable from working in those cramped headquarters uh, where the library was. So uh, I, I do wish you great success and I'd like to see more expansion to actually use this facility and don't feel so crimped because you didn't have to work in that little bitty place. <laughs> so, welcome. Thank you. I will say that was one of the things we were looking for, certainly in the hiring process, was new ideas, fresh things to bring, and we were very excited to hear what all they had to bring. Um, so, yes, look out for new ideas and <laughs> changes coming. Well, it seems as though the new library has been incredibly successful since the get-go and uh, hopefully with your help it'll just continue to do so. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Thanks. Okay, the next thing on the agenda is a <coughs> Union Street block party request. And is that our friend Mr. Nordle? Welcome, Chris. Good evening. Um, so last year, uh, Jen Lane came in before the select board and asked for authorization to close Union Street down for a few day, a few hours on a, a weekend afternoon just to kind of get everyone on the street out and you know get everyone together, have a barbecue, just kind of get to know your neighbors. Um, it actually worked really well, and a lot of the people kind of met for the first time at that event. Um, it was kind of cool to see everybody sort of exit their house for a while. So this is basically just a repeat request, um, close the street down from, was it 11.30 to 4.30, Bill? I think so, yeah. It was 11.30 to 4.30, and I think you, that was to get it half an hour on each end. Yeah. So. Which, which day was that? The 13th, I'm sorry, 13th, yeah. October. Yep. Saturday, October yep. 13th. So you had quite a time the last time, huh? Yeah, it was good. There was you know, it's, it, it was interesting to see the mix of people that actually came out and kind of got together. It ranged from, you know, the 
younger people that are renting some of the apartments and just came into town a few months before the party to people that have lived there their whole lives. Yeah, no, that's... Uh, <laughs> so it was, it was pretty cool. Sounds like a, a great thing to do because uh, that's one of the... As Vermont continues to get older and replaced by younger people, you know, right. we know so few. I mean, the, the older people yeah. that have been here forever, you go into the restaurants, local restaurants, and but God, you, you struggle to see one or two people that you know now, and uh, it's, it's all, all from yeah. uh, people leaving and new people coming. And so it seemed to run pretty well last year. Um, you know, there was, like Bill said, a brief setup period before everyone kind of got together, and then you know, tables and some barbecues out and just a clean up towards the end of it. Um, I'm not aware of any issues that that you know, might have created or... No, did we, I can't remember on the, um, the end toward Armory uh, Drive, um, did we close it there? Or, yeah. So we allowed people to come up from the roundabout and go up to the Armory and to those Armory. places yeah. there, yeah. right? Yeah. So it would be closed just this side of Armory Drive mm -hmm. and then at uh, Stowe Street. Yeah. And Obviously, you know, local people, if they had to go out, they were allowed to do so. But the highway crew will help, you know, we'll get the barricades up. And um, I think at the end of the day last year, you just moved the things aside and they came back and picked them came up. Back, yeah, the next working day. Do that again, yeah. be fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, there were no issues from our perspective. Um, we'll make sure to let the police know. <clears throat> is that something you need one of us to take care of? No, or we'll, let them, we'll, okay. we'll let them know, and I'll give them your, I'll give them your contact information in case they, but I doubt they'll need to contact anybody. It's pretty straightforward. So, if uh, is there any other questions from any of the rest of the board? No. One of you people would love to make a motion to approve a Union Street block party. Uh, on October 13th from 11.30 to 4.30. <laughs> I will make that motion. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Any further questions? All those who approve, say aye. 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 Thank you. Good, good to see you, Ross. <laughs> Is anybody allowed to crash the party? Come on over. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, recreational items. Social media policy was first on the list. I have a copy of it for you guys. It's pretty short. Thank you. And then I have a camera too. Two different things. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Back when we were over in the fire station, um, we talked a little bit about a social media policy then, and um, we kicked one around a little bit. Courtney had um, looked at some information from VLCT. Uh, we ended up not passing anything, and <clears throat> we were having a struggle at the time about, um, you know, some social media pages that were uh, being put up for the rec department in particular that were not really sanctioned by the municipality. So we, we asked that those be taken down. And then through Deb's tenure here and now into Nick's, we haven't really done anything with social media. I don't use it at all except for an occasional look at a website, which probably isn't social media according to the definition that you have in front of you. But uh, Nick has experience with social media um, when you worked at Johnson, right? You were involved in posting social media pages. So he came up with a very simple, um, more or less definition of what we're talking about. I think Facebook um, and... Uh, Instagram. Instagram, not Snapchat, Instagram are probably the two that uh, he might use. Um, I asked 
the policy as he first wrote it pertained only to the recreation uh, department and recreation pages. I asked him to broaden it a little bit. And if we end up having other departments in the town that want to use it, and I specifically think of the library and, and then just general information from the front shop here. You know, uh, revitalizing Waterbury is already using social media as they advertise things. Excuse me. <laughs> for the Route 100 project and as they get ready for the Main Street project. So I can envision that we would do that. So with that brief introduction, I'll turn it over to Nick. And why don't you tell them a little bit what you did in Johnson with it and how you see that it can be an effective tool here. Yeah, um, so I did it at uh, Johnson when I worked there. Um, I also, I don't think I told Bill, I did it for the Vermont Bucks when I'd had my one year stint as an intern. Um, also a, a sports <coughs> like uh, group. Um, so yeah, um, at, at Johnson we'd post Upcoming games, upcoming events that we were doing. And um, this is this was Johnson State College. By yes, the way. Not, yeah. Not the town of Johnson. <clears throat> um, uh, the town of Johnson would frequently share our events because it, it overlaps. They shared on their page to get people to come, um, and we'd post you know recaps. That's not really what we would do here because um, we're not recapping any athletic events. We could recap events, something like. Um, in the future for. But here I'd like to use Facebook uh, primarily to showcase what we're offering um, as far as rec programs go. Uh, I think some of the low enrollment um, that's happened in the past year, some of that can be solved by just getting the word out. Um, <coughs> you, if you look at Stowe Parks and Rec's Facebook page or Essex, that's basically the same exact thing I would do. I, I would post when our swim lessons got canceled last minute um, because just people are on social media. It's a, a quick way to get information. Um, I also create uh, graphics, graphical things like posters, um, but it'd be a lot more cost effective because Facebook's free to, to make a banner on Facebook and, and share that instead of printing posters and putting it around town. We do a mixture of both, but... Um, yeah, that's basically my overall goal for social media. Um, and it would just be Facebook to start out with, and then maybe we do an Instagram, just because our parks are very beautiful. Um, Instagram is, for you who don't know, it's a, it's a photo, social media, it's just photos. Um, so I would do like a park of the day photo or a picture of the week photo, it would be one of our parks. Um, or maybe a league happening out here at night, a sunset with the lights on. You know, just to again showcase our facilities uh, and get people uh, thinking about Waterbury Rec. So the uh, uh, Nick, the uh, posting responsibilities on here and the frequency that you mentioned that would be something at this point that you envision that you would be doing. Yeah. Um, and if it developed um, beyond that to other other town departments. Um, the recommendation to use this sort of uh, frequency of refresh makes sense to you? Yeah, yeah, this isn't specific to recreation. This is a social media mm -hmm. group as a whole. It's, it's something they should abide by to stay relevant, to make sure people don't lose the following, I guess. Yeah. Yes. Oftentimes that information gets stale and we can just uh, uh, relabel it as something from the historical society. Right. <laughs> stale. What about pictures, Nick? Um, yeah, we'll sign, um, well, kids right now sign a release form. Um, if they're under 18, their parents have to sign a release form uh, to have their picture taken mm -hmm. um, or used. Uh, the kids that are using the pamphlet right now for the advertised the summer programs, those were all kids that had their <coughs> release signed. Um, so we would keep the same policy. We don't want any kids that don't have a release signed on mm -hmm. social media. Um, but I think it is important to show you know, if we're advertising a you know, hiking and fishing camp, we show our kids hiking and fishing in, at the res or something, you know, mm -hmm. so people understand, like, they can relate and be like, oh, it looks fun. Um, but making sure that they're, they have a waiver signed. So what are your, what are, what are your ratings uh, pertaining to 
Is that the ratings of the facilities and no, so when you make a or? when you make a business page on Facebook, you can rate it. Um, it's like I think still Parks and Recs is rated four point something, and um, it, it would it? the public. We're rated all right. Like I think the town of Waterbury, if you Google it, it's probably rated on Google. Stars pop up next to businesses or groups or organizations. Um, oh, so so it, individuals give their personal yeah their personal feedback. Is, and then if there was comments attached to those stars that were inappropriate, <laughs> the admin can go in and delete them, so. How much more um, work would this be for you? Uh, I mean, I'm pretty quick on the computer, so. It seems like it would be just part of everyday Yeah, it would just be an everyday thing. It's, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be, it, in some senses it would save me time if I didn't have to hang, hang, up, hang up more posters advertising an event. Um, and it also saves time getting the word out about like a swim lesson being canceled or, mm -hmm. or whatnot. And it also offers the public the ability to ask questions on certain events that are posted. Like, is this free? Where is it going to be located? Et cetera, et cetera. It's mainly intended for us to get word out, right? It's, yes. It's not, while there will be an opportunity to ask a question and things like that, it's not yeah. meant to be an interactive. No, page, right, exactly. Right. And we'll probably turn comments off to start out with. Um, it's probably uh, pretty tough to monitor uh, how successful something like this would be. Uh, there's something called. <laughs> or is there a way of. There's a way. There's um, Facebook analytics, so I can see the exposure, everything gets, how many clicks, how many views on a screen. Um, it'll tell me if it was a mobile screen, a like laptop screen, some obscure screen. It's like a television. Um, you can pull it. It's pretty remarkable. You can pull that data. Yeah, but I meant as far as um, um, people actually coming and using the services and, and uh, or signing up to the programs. Is that can you monitor that? Yeah. So I I made a mock one. It's not live or anything. But I, for instance, our fall swim lessons started. We have a partnership with First and Fitness in Berlin. Um, a lot of people don't know about it. We post on front page form, but front porch form. But uh, that's about it. Um, they're still pretty popular, but we could definitely fit more kids in there. And right. so I made a mock one where, um, you know, I made a little graphic that said, register now, flashy, catches their attention. Um, and then in the description, there's a link that you click. I can see how many people have clicked that link that leads you right to the registration. Um, so I can measure it in that sense. Uh, so you'd know how many people look at it and how many, if 50% of them. If interact with it, yeah. Then, yeah, yep. the success rate of right. people. And so this is uh, this Facebook presence and the Instagram presence is going to be in addition to more traditional forms of getting the word out just by via the website and everything. Yeah, else. yeah, That's, no, we'll still keep those. We'll still keep front porch. Form. I'm another one in the Stone Age that I'm not on Facebook. I, so right, right, no. <laughs> if the I, event is only on Facebook, I'm no, 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 no. I'm still pretty <laughs> posters. They're, the same yeah. as well. <laughs> They're just fewer posters that I have to print than. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we would we would continue to do what we do now. Right. Um, okay. You know, the website would continue to have information. Front porch form would continue to be yep. used. Uh, you know, we'll still print brochures and things like right. that. Um, use the use the uh, means by which we are now. Maybe we won't put up as many posters right. and things like that. But just an additional it, channel. It's meant to be um, additional. And it's also meant to, to be present in the world where people live now that mm -hmm. you and I haven't found yet. <laughs> so is there a need for a motion for this? Yeah, I think it would be good. Um, we, the last time, I don't know if there was a motion, but the board expressed um, uh, an unwillingness to have a big social media presence in the past because we didn't have it reined in and, and it was being done kind of in a rogue fashion. Um, and now with this that Nick has laid out here, uh, I think it would be good to just have it um, in the minutes that the select board has seen this and approves uh, reaching out to the public in this fashion. Based on the guidelines set forward here? Yeah. Yeah. Would somebody like to make a motion to uh, approve the social media policy uh, 
based on the uh, guidelines set forward in uh, the handout that we've received. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the social media policy if you see it. Jane, is your mic on? It was. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve the social media policy as it's written here. Okay. Is there a second for that? I'll second that. All right. Any further questions? Um, I'm presuming that you are the keeper of the policies, and um, I noted that there's an update footer uh, uh, on this so that. We, we have a means of periodic review. Yeah. Yes, sir. Anybody else? <coughs> okay. Um, motion's been made and seconded. And uh, if, it is, if it meets your approval, I'll say aye. 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 I don't know how to look at the paper version, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. We'll be posting anything. After the meeting, we're going to join Fred and get some ribs at the drive-in. <laughs> So you have a memorandum as well, Nick. Yeah, so I think, would you say, Bill, getting moving up with the times, I'd like to be able to accept payment online through our recreation portal. Um, they offer that system free of charge. Uh, we just have, they just basically have to flick a switch. Um, so say. Just, just to remind the board, a couple of years ago, um, I, along with Deb, came to you and asked if we could begin using this product called MyRec. Um, and it's, a, it's a, uh, a means by which you can uh, show the public through online uh, uh, viewing what types of uh, programs that you offer, what facilities that you have for rent, uh, field fees, uh, what else is on there. Uh, program uh, every program we run with we usually run through that and then they can that's how they register it um, it's really like a database too it, right. it saves a lot of time on my end it populates invoices automatically sends it to them um, so when we turned this on we decided that we would we would go in uh, small steps we came in we talked to the board about would we allow um, credit cards for the payment of taxes and we went to the, to the village for water sewer bills. And um, folks can do that. Though that is the only credit card uh, transaction that we take. And the, uh, I'm correct when I say the people who do that, Carla, they pay the fee, right? 3%? Yeah. Correct. So. It doesn't um, go to the town, though. <coughs> right. The, <coughs> it was, it's automatic to the to the credit card company. So, you know, if you go to a restaurant and you have a hundred dollar bill, um, the restaurant tour, you pay a hundred bucks and then the restaurant tour is paying two or three dollars back to the credit card company. Uh, we didn't want to have to remit those fees to the credit card company because that is a tax on people who are using the credit card, so to speak. So those, um, uh, tax and water and sewer uh, bills uh, that are paid on online, the, the actual person paying it pays the service fee. Uh, when we took my rec, we wanted to have it such that uh, people could look at my rec, see what program they wanted to sign up for, or sign their kids up for, what facilities they might want to rent, and they would choose it and let's say you wanted to rent the Hope Davy Pavilion on October 13th. You would, you would click that, and then a message would get sent to the rec director. The rec director would be able to see that, and then he would say, yep, the uh, facility is open that date, and then the invoice would be generated. <coughs> He'd kind of uh, hold the space for that person they'd have 10 days or two weeks or something like that to pay. And if they paid their fee on that time, then the facility was theirs for, for the day chosen. Um, surprisingly, uh, that system, which is pretty convenient, <coughs> isn't convenient for the people of today's society who would prefer to use their credit card to pay rather than to have to go to the post office and buy a stamp and write a check and get an envelope. 
they'd rather pay 3% to put it on their credit card. Um, you have a lot of people asking for this service, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, so I have a lot of emails saying, where can I pay online? I don't see it. And I'm like, I have to tell them we don't accept it online right now. And that they'll have the mail check in or come in and visit us and bring a check or cash. And um, when we started this, uh, Leanne was still the bookkeeper at the time. And as I said, we decided to go slow to make sure that the system worked well, that um, the reservations were being tracked properly and, and kept properly. We've had good success with this program, but as Nick says, people continue to ask to be able to pay online. <coughs> so our recommendation now, after talking with Michelle, um, the bookkeeper now, to make sure that this is something that she can do, because the, the way that it works now is that an invoice gets generated, that's, that's an account receivable, and then when the payment comes in, the account receivable gets cleared and, you know, cash comes in. Um, when people pay by credit card, uh, the money gets collected by the credit card company and then they have to pay us. And of course, they're paying us generally a lump sum mm -hmm. that has several transactions involved. So the bookkeeper will have a little bit of work to do to, to input those uh, transactions. but. She uh, doesn't have any issue with it. We've decided that some of the things that are kind of um, <clears throat> small price items, we're not going to sell uh, concessions and concession stands with credit cards. For the time being, we're not going to take daily fees at the swimming pool by credit card because there could just be a lot of really small transactions and, and that could uh, take up more time. But this will not cost the town anything, um, and I guess the public will be happier to spend more money than they need. So they'll go right from their social media platform, right, to, right to just sliding the card. Yeah, huh? Exactly. And, uh, whoever gets there first wins. Um, what about refunds? Are those, yeah, those so really handled the old-fashioned way? Um, they, they can either handle two ways. Um, if they've already paid, we can, we will, well, they, well, assuming they paid um, with a credit card, I can either go in the system and refund them on the credit card. Michelle could also go in on the system um, and refund, refund them that way to their card, um, or we can Does cut a check. Does that cost the town? No. Nope. Okay. No, I double checked with the guy last week. So yeah. um, that 3% doesn't get refunded unless uh, it's authorized.net is what my rec uses um, as, as the, the processor of these payments. Um, unless the air is on their end, um, the three percent would just—that's part of the agreement part of the they signed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Is that all kinds of credit cards, or? Yeah. Certain ones. No, all kinds. Just, just the good ones. No, yeah. yeah. I should, I should backtrack. <laughs> I don't know if they take foreign credit cards. Well, I mean, like uh, American Express. Yeah. MasterCard. Yeah, all, all the major ones. Is it only credit cards or debit too? Uh, that would be both, yeah. Are other towns using the same? Yeah, so I actually live in Jeffersonville, which is in Cambridge. Um, and they don't have uh, a rec director, but they have a beautiful facility um, that is now indoor tennis courts. Um, and if you if you look on their rec, they have, a, they have my rec too. Their select board pays for this service. Um, and I think you just scroll down a little bit, and in red letters it says 3% will be added for credit card. Um, transactions, so they are they're using it, um, and it seems to be going well. So, I would make a motion to approve the um, taking credit card payments using this method. What's called? Online method. Online method. Okay. Go government through the government portal. This is strictly for the recreation program, correct? Yeah, that's the only we already take. As I said, already take taxes and water and sewer, so. This is really not town clerk fees and things like that at this point. There's kind of no reason to do that. Very good. So Jane made a motion. Is I'll second that. Okay. Nat will second it. Any further comments? <coughs> I'll, I'll comment. Okay. Like, uh, I, I said, half a dozen years ago, 
I've been off the track committee for about two years now, but at least a half a dozen years ago, we could see the benefit in this, so I'm all in favor of it. Took a long time getting here, didn't it, Herschel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think okay. a lot of uh, right. younger parents are coming along, people are still using things, right. for everything. It makes sense. They'll, as Bill says, waste that 3%, yeah. but. They're like the convenience. I guess they got more money than most people. <laughs> <laughs> all right, a motion's been made and seconded. Uh, there's no further comments. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, you very much, Nick. Thanks, Nick. Have a good night. I'm going to head over the mountain. Yeah. yeah. Watch out for the moose. <laughs> You're the last man standing, Bill. Manager's items. Yep. Two things. Uh, to chew on here. Yeah, we'll right. we'll start with this one, then I'll pass out the budget report after we talk about this. Um, okay. This I don't think will take very long to go through, but I want to. I told you that I was starting to work on this a couple of weeks ago, and um, <coughs> it's not fully fleshed out yet, but this is the list of highway vehicles that we have, vehicles and equipment, and fire department vehicles and equipment that we have. And um, you can see there in the left-hand column, uh, the highway is at the top. That's kind of the top two-thirds of the page. And then the fire department uh, equipment is at the bottom one third of the page. If anybody's interested, there's more here. Um, and then you can see uh, the date, the year in which we bought that uh, piece of equipment. And <clears throat> you know we have some tank trucks that were purchased in 1999 by the fire department. Uh, those are clearly the oldest that we have. And then. Uh, uh, two pumpers in 2000, and um, the tankers and the pumpers are typically on 20-year cycles. So we're coming up on the time, <coughs> excuse me, that, <coughs> that we're going to have to replace those pieces of equipment. Now the NFPA, the National Fire whatever Association, mm -hmm. uh, they recommend 20-year uh, uh, replacements for these types of vehicles. And uh, the fire department and I have been working on a replacement schedule for a while. And as you can see here, down in red, in the bottom, uh, the bottom half of the page, the bottom third of the page, uh, right now there's a pumper scheduled for 19, 2019, uh, another one in 2020, and then a tanker in 21 and 22. Um, these can be moved around a little bit, probably, but within the next couple of years, we're going to have to replace these vehicles. And as you can see, a uh, tank truck that cost $84,000 in 1999 uh, is about $225,000 now. <coughs> and a pump truck <coughs> that was $176,000 in 2000 is up in the $460,000 range now. Um, I'm hopeful that the numbers in the columns um, for the purchase price are conservative. Um, there's a formula embedded here that takes the, the 2018 replacement value. So if you look at the uh, pumper there in 2019, it takes the $437,000 that we think it's a 2018 price. It adds 5% inflation right now, which I hope is high. And then it also factors in a percentage for the sale price of the vehicle that we're going to be getting rid of. And I hope that's low. So <coughs> we won't know until <coughs> we get closer to the purchase time. But I'm hoping the numbers on, the, on this page on the whole are higher than they're going to be. But we don't know that for certain. Um, could I clarify with a stupid question? These are all sure. new, new 
pieces of equipment? Yeah. Okay. Right now. They are all all new. Um, there's a couple. Um, the aerial. Um, the aerial tower that we just bought in 2017. We bought that used, and that doesn't show on this schematic because it's 20 years out <laughs> or 25 years out. We, we figure we'll always buy a used aerial um, uh, ladder. Um, up at the top of the page, uh, the first item on the list there is a, the grader. We just bought the grader in 2017. We bought that new. We have bought used graders in the past, but those are really the only two pieces of equipment on the list <coughs> that we would typically buy uh, or even consider buying used. Um, and the boat, which, you know, that's... Uh, <coughs> A small ticket item, but we bought a used boat for the fire department as well. So, um, at the top of the page, the top third of, I mean, the top two thirds of the page, those are the highway vehicles, and you can see in 2019 there's a, uh, a mower that uh, time to buy a new mower, uh, and then there's the tandem dump truck, and then there's a, a pickup truck. So if you go down that 2019 column, the total highway equipment right now, it's about $204,000. And then if you go down further, you see that uh, pump truck for the fire department at 443850 And then if you go down all the way to the bottom of the page, that last little grouping, you see the total vehicle purchases so in 2019, if we buy these things that are on this list, it's $647,000. And then if you go to the right in that same row, you'll see that it's 682 in 2020, 510 almost in 2021, and then it drops off uh, because those tankers, I mean those pump trucks are really the, the big ticket items. So. Um, I'm not here asking permission to buy any of this right now. I'm just showing you. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm just showing you what's on the list, um, and we should start to talk at some point here, not tonight, about how we're going to do this. So, <clears throat> for instance, just uh, for conversation piece. If you look down at the very bottom, one, two, three, four, five lines up from the bottom, you see four and five lines up, you see uh, debt, you see a 10-year bond, and then you see a 20-year bond. Now, I don't have paving projects on this sheet because this is just vehicles, <clears throat> but we've already talked about that we're hoping to do Loomis Hill next year, so I threw in in 2019, a uh, $1 million bond for paving. That shows up in the green font there. And if you move to the right-hand column there in 2020, that would be the first year that we would have to pay for the debt service on that particular bond. <coughs> I assumed 5%, which I hope is high, um, and then uh, one-tenth of the principal. So in that first year, the paving bond would cost $150,000 in debt service, and dividing that into the grand list that I projected for 2020, that's almost two cents. And then right above that, um, you see the in red font, $1,424,598. Um, <clears throat> That is the sum of the four fire trucks between 2019 and 2022. And I think what I would like to do is talk to Gary, since we bought those uh, pump trucks in 2000, <coughs> 20 years would be 2020. And then the tankers were already pushing those out a little further than their 20 year life. but. 
the concept would be there, you know, uh, if you bonded that million four for those four vehicles, um, and then you'd buy them, maybe you'd buy the uh, pumpers in 2020 and then buy both tankers in 2021. And if you put them in the same year, uh, <clears throat> if you buy two pump trucks in the same year, there's about an $8,000 savings. Um, you know, and if we're buying them you know, one year apart anyway, it seems to save 8000 bucks mm -hmm. to move them into the same year would be helpful. Uh, I assume it probably wouldn't be $8,000 for the tankers, but there would be some savings if you put those in the same year. But anyway, if we had to borrow the full amount of money, and as I said, I have not factored into this page at all. I haven't factored in any of the fund balances that we have in any of our reserve funds right now. And I'm hoping that the prices are higher. So this is kind of a worst case scenario is what I'm, I'm trying to show here. <coughs> but if we, if we bonded for the $1.4 million in 2020 for those four fire trucks, if you move over to the right, uh, one-tenth of 1424000 Actually, that's, uh, I have to check that. That might, I want to borrow those for 20 years. Um, and I, that probably is 20 years. I don't have my calculator here. Can you divide that number by 20? So it must be seven. So what you're telling me is you're... 71. Yeah, and then 5% of that would be another 70. So that's the 142,460 <coughs> would be 1 20th of, you know, that'd be the first payment on a 20-year bond. And then that 142,460 in that year would be a little less than 2 cents on the grand list. And if you combine the zero point, I mean the point zero one nine seven plus the point zero three eight two, I mean the point zero one eight five three, it would be about three point eight cents on on your tax rate in two thousand twenty one. That would encompass the paving <coughs> and, that, and the fire. That, that four cents would be the paving and those four fire trucks if we had to bond that much money. Now, you can see above, if you go up, um, well, one line above the, the green million dollars in 2019. Mm -hmm. In 2019, if we just had to outright purchase the $647,000 worth of vehicles and raise the money on the grand list to pay cash for it, <coughs> it'd be about eight and a half cents. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And then going out to the right, you see it, it's eight and a half cents the first year, it's eight and a half cents the second year, or almost nine cents the second year. That's not cumulative. I mean, that's, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's eight cents. Um, so certainly I think you can make a case, especially for the pump trucks, you might want to, you know, when the time comes, we'll see what the what the money situation looks like, maybe we just buy the tankers for cash and don't bond, you know, bond for those. But they're, they're trucks that we'll have for 20 years, so mm -hmm. you can make a case for spreading the cost out over the cost of those vehicles. For the highway vehicles up above, the highest year that is on this page is 2021, and it's just short of $260,000. <coughs> I don't propose borrowing for any of that now. I mean, at this point, I don't. Um, and again, I'm not here recommending that we borrow this money yet. I'm just letting you know what things look like, what things we have coming down the pike that we have to, that we have to pay for. Uh, to keep our service level the same that we have now, especially in the fire department. So with that, I'll
I'll stop talking, take a drink of water, and hopefully stop coughing so much. <laughs> and if you have questions, I can try to answer. What under the the green uh, numbers that say one hundred and fifty thousand? Yeah. I think you just explained it. The uh, point zero one nine seven. Right. What was that again? So that would be the that would be the tax rate that would be necessary to um, carry that debt service. So we'd have, we'd have a principal and interest payment of $150,000 in 2020 on that million dollar bond, and it would cost us about two cents on the grain list to pay for that debt service. And then the same thing with the, the red numbers, <coughs> except the red numbers would be <coughs> over 20 years as opposed to over 10 years. You know, and and I didn't have time to to run these numbers. I looked at it and said, "Well, okay." You know, um, it, it might be possible with the bond bank to work with them if we decided that we needed to do this, and rather than to have two issues, one at a million dollars and then one at one point four million that are just one year mm -hmm. apart. Maybe we can bar borrow, you know, do the whole 2.4 million, and then, as opposed to have one at 10 years and one at 20 years, um, you know, split the difference and have one payment over 15 years, uh, and see what that looks like. The the 10 and the 20 is that we've typically not wanted to borrow for paving projects. Beyond, beyond 10, 10 years, years because yeah. we might have to be doing something to that road within, you know, in 10 years or so. But with the fire trucks, there's certainly no reason not to go that way unless it just makes sense to meld the, the issue together and, and kind mm -hmm. of melt the payment schedule together. Well, I mean, the benefit to <coughs> your concept of 15 years for the whole smash, obviously the payment would be just a tad bit higher uh, because of the paving aspect um, being added to, well, actually wouldn't, the fire trucks being added, being brought down to 15 years, pavement, the paving cost would be less because you're bumping it to 15 years, but if you can, you know, once you reach that 15 year milestone, after that you've basically got five years free on your, right. on your trucks. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, I'm looking at it the way that I looked at it right now um, was to try to, you know, um, <coughs> mitigate. Was to try, no, no, was to try to say, well, there's other things that we haven't even talked about mm -hmm. that are going to be being That's added I mean. to the tax rate. So you might have to you might have to go out the 10 and the 20 years just to get a manageable number to pay for. Mm. I think, you know, your idea, and I think we should look at it, is if we could meld it together and then do it over 15 years, you know, see, and I can run those numbers, I just didn't have enough time to do it mm -hmm. today. So this is without any <coughs> typical CIP funding mechanism plugged into this. Uh, right. <laughs> so, for these, for the vehicle CIPs and the paving CIPs, basically we're putting money aside and we're spending almost all of that money in the year that we put it aside. There's a little bit that, that is residual and, and hanging around. Um, we've got some debt service, we've got some debt service, not necessarily in these um, funds that are going to be dropping off. Uh, I, I, I can't remember, I think this, we've got a storm drain bond, which would be the infrastructure CIP. I think this is the last year on that one. Mm. And next year is the last year on the highway garage, or, or it's flipped, it's either mm -hmm. the highway this year, but there's one going away this year, and there's one going away next year. So we, you know, we'll gain a little bit. <coughs> but you're correct, Chris, there's nothing in here about any fund balance that's existing in the CIPs that we might be able to use. Um, 
and as I said, I'm, I'm not promising it, but I tried to build it conservative, so this is a worst case scenario, and I'm hopeful that when we go to make the purchases of these pieces of equipment, they'll be a little bit less than mm -hmm. what we're showing here. But I just wanted to give you the idea, uh, give you an idea of what's coming down the pike. Um, and at some point later this year, certainly early next, we'll get to talk. And, you know, the fire department equipment, really that's, that's the most critical. And the reason, the only reason I say that is because the fire department gets an ISO rating and our homeowner's insurance is, yeah. paid, you know, yeah. if you have a better ISO rating, you get better, you get better prices. <coughs> and if you deviate too far, if you end up pushing your pumpers off, and they're all 25 years old, you get yeah, dinged you on, that, on that rating. So, okay. that, <clears throat> but, you know, Gary put 2019 and 2020 here just to have, you know, one in one year and one the next. He did tell me about the savings if you had them in the same year. But certainly, I don't think we need to buy that pump truck earlier than, you know, I think 2020 will be early enough for the first one. Of them. And we can discuss a little bit later, you know, whether we, we have them built two at the same time and take advantage of a little savings or not. Anyway, <clears throat> that's just kind of information for now. So, Bill, um, when you have this uh, average 20 years on the ground list at 8 million three, that's Previous 20 years average? No, that's going forward. That's so going if you forward. take 2018, you see the grand list, 7,462 7, through That's 30. fairly accurate. That's to what this we year's have grand right list. That's, that's the one it. that we set okay. this year that we used to set the tax rate. Yeah. Going forward, I hope I'm conservative on the grand list as well. I, it increases by 1% a year. Okay. That's, that's historic. That's what this is showing. It's a little less than historic, okay. but you see that if you go to 2019, it's 7,536,000. That's 1% higher than 18. Okay. And then 20 is 1% higher than 19. And out here in, in uh, 2039, um, I take that row and I add it all up, and then I divided it by 22 years, okay. and that's the 8,297 average that's there. Great. You'll Thank probably you. be retired by then, won't you, Bill? <laughs> <laughs> I'll start with that? Yeah. He's not saying. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, thank you. Another pile of paper. So this is just raw numbers, um, budget through uh, September 30th. <coughs> Hot off the press this afternoon. Um, <clears throat> and I'm only going to just take a couple minutes to just look at this. And the uh, the yellow highlights are the things that you probably want to pay attention to a little bit. The property taxes we build out, you know, including the school, it was probably $13 million worth of property taxes. The way that um, the accounting system works is all the other funds get all of their money that's due them. So, if you look over on page, um, <coughs> if you look over on page nine of twelve, <coughs> you'll see right at the top of the page that in the highway fund, we budgeted one million three hundred ninety-two thousand six hundred seventy-five dollars of property taxes 
and you see that's the amount of property taxes mm -hmm. that that fund got. It's the same in the library fund. Um, the general fund, which is the first page, the general fund uh, takes whatever is left over, either in excess or in deficit. So at the end of the year, when there's delinquent taxes, it's the general fund that gets hit. <coughs> the reason why this shows 1,400,000 and we're at 87%, this number changes constantly. The, the actual number changes constantly, mm -hmm. whereas in the highway fund and the library fund, the number is fixed as soon as we hit the bills, the money goes there. The state, as people file their information, you know, we talked about the late uh, penalty for filing, the homestead exemption and all that stuff. So as people change, uh, as, as the state gets those um, filings, they adjust the amount of uh, property taxes that we end up getting. So it's always going to be off. It's uh, on the general fund. It, it is never going to be exactly what we budgeted. And later this year, we'll probably have a tax sale and we'll collect some revenue from prior years that will also hit that line. So that line is on, in the general fund never going to be exact. It's always going to be off and it will always reflect at the end of the year delinquencies. So it will always be underfunded. <laughs> um, down in the middle of the page, the state grant for VTrans liaison. That's the work that uh, Barb does. And we bill the state for her work on the Route 100 project and the Main Street project. <coughs> and we're through 75% of the year, and this shows that we've received 61% of the revenue for this. We're actually ahead because she's probably only hasn't sent in the bills for um, July through September yet. So that looks like we're behind. We're probably going to be ahead of the game there. The town clerk's fees, um, <coughs> they've slowed down on a percentage basis uh, in the last few weeks. Through the first five months of the year, we were, we were ahead of uh, schedule. Uh, now we're slightly behind. I, there's, that's, there's nothing that can be done about that. That's just a function of what gets recorded, what kind, how many properties transfer and the like. But things have slowed down a little bit in comparison, so my guess is we'll be a little bit under there. Um, on page two, um, you know, you're, on page one, you see if you look at some of the recreation lines, swimming pool income, for example, we're you know ten thousand dollars ahead of what we budgeted. Uh, we took in ten thousand dollars more than what we budgeted for swimming pool. Uh, we budgeted one hundred and twenty-six thousand five hundred dollars for all rec fees, and to date we've taken in one twenty-two, one ten. So I think on a raw basis we'll probably get close to the 126.5. <coughs> when you take into consideration that some of the revenue lines are directly tied to expense lines, if we didn't have the revenue, we didn't have the expense, we're really further ahead on revenues uh, versus what our expenses are going to be for recreation than, than, than this even was. Um, turning over to page three, I just highlighted a couple of the line items that will be over on. <coughs> Office supplies, I'm not sure why. Sometimes um, there's a miscoding. Other times it's just that you, know, you, you didn't think that you were going to need something and you end up, you did. You probably won't spend too much more in that line anyway. I'm not exactly sure. I didn't go into the details. That electricity solar line, that's where we pay AES for the solar array on uh, Route 1, uh, Route 1 on uh, Sweet Road. We pay it on this line, and then at the end of the year, I distribute that expense through all the various electric. It's just easier to 
tell Michelle to expense that two hundred and two dollars to this to line that. every month, yep. and at the end of the year make one adjustment as opposed to, you know, every month five dollars goes to this bill and five dollars to that bill and three, and, uh, you know, one hundred and fifty dollars to another bill. <coughs> A manager's professional development. Um, I had budgeted, as I do every year, uh, to attend the ICMA conference in Baltimore. That was uh, earlier, well, it was late last month. Um, I didn't go, so we're not going to spend close to the $3,000 there. I didn't go this year because I had too many family <laughs> issues, to, too many trips to Georgia, so I couldn't afford the time. <coughs> the commercial audit. We haven't had that done yet. We haven't paid for it, but if you remember from the last conversation, that's going to be about twice as much, yeah. a little more than twice as much as that. 22000 right? Something? Yeah. And then um, going down the page, um, we should be receiving a bill fairly soon from the state for the police. Uh, we'll pay half of that 185 uh, sometime soon, and then the remaining half at the end of the year. Uh, the very bottom line on that page three, um, fire department, uh, we're a little bit ahead. Uh, we've spent more than a year right now. We, we've had a couple of uh, big fires this year. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the, the fire at the uh, Wallace Farm, of course, on yeah. Easter was a big one. Uh, we had another structure fire a couple of weeks ago down on Little River Road. Uh, we had a structured fire in the stone shed yeah. here on Foundry Street back a couple months ago. So, um, Matt, I'm not sure you know, but <clears throat> the regular pay line item for fire department at $26,000. We do pay them for training, and they've got $26,000. They basically take attendance at every meeting and, uh, you know, for a meeting, for a regular meeting, you get $25 for going and for a, um, a maintenance meeting, you get $15 or something like that. They, they take that pay at the end of the year. They like to go Christmas shopping with that money. <laughs> so we don't pay anything for regular pay until December. Okay. And then the part-time pay <coughs> is actually the the pay for calls to uh, fires or other emergencies. Um, little ahead on the, or behind, so to speak, vehicle maintenance for the fire department. Um, they did have a problem with one of the trucks. I don't, I can't remember if it was the aerial or not. Yeah, but they had, they to, had, to, tow they had to have it towed. Um, <laughs> oh, I saw that it was a uh, it was a relatively minor issue, but it was, you know, cost a little bit more and it was not intended. It wasn't planned for. So that takes care of that. If you go over to page five, um, you notice the regular pay for the pool is about uh, $8,000 more than was budgeted. Um, but as I told you, uh, swimming pool income was much higher. And also, um, we've taken in $8,265 of Red Cross training fees. So the overspending on the regular pay for the lifeguards is to do the, the training that mm -hmm. we're getting revenue for. <coughs> they have, uh, <coughs> if you remember, Deb instituted a, a cooperative arrangement with First and Fitness. We have uh, lessons ongoing there now. So we're still collecting money <coughs> and still having some expenses in uh, for the pool, even though our outdoor pool is closed. The cross charges, uh, that will, I'll take care of that at the end of the year. That's uh, payment made from the recreation department to the highway department for a time that the mm -hmm. highway crew spends cleaning the pool and the like. Um, <coughs> So in that pool, right now we 
we're, we've spent about 100%, a little bit more than 100% of the pool budget this year. But our revenues for pool is about 140% of the pool mm. budget, so we're doing okay. Uh, page six. Um, there's really nothing on here, just the recreation looks like it, we're at 51% through 75% of the year, but that last line item, the $30,000 transfer to capital fund hasn't shown up yet. If you, if you put um, three quarters of that into the actual column, you know, you'd be up in the 68% range probably. Same with parks. Um, that's a last of the year um, transfer. Um, in the planning department, they're right about <laughs> where they should be in total, about 70, they're just short of 74% of spending <coughs> through 75% of the year. Uh, Dina's working a little bit more than she was budgeted. Um, and some, uh, some more DRB hearings than, um, uh, they go longer than they had been planned, maybe. Um, I'm pretty sure she's scheduled for 32 hours a week right now. <coughs> she's probably working closer to 35. <coughs> um, as far as planning fees are concerned, um, you have to go back to page two to see it, but I can just tell you we budgeted $18,000 for planning fees. We've collected 17765 through today, so probably be uh, a little ahead by the end of the year on that. Uh, the middle of page seven, the debt management, uh, that's a November expense. Or that, this one is, yeah, that will be a November expense. And then special articles, except for the community band and the senior citizen center. <coughs> pay those all at the end of the year. And then, if you look at page eight, uh, we did budget 37,500 for um, parking at 51 South Main Street. We're not gonna spend that, but if you remember at tax setting time, we knew we weren't gonna spend it, so we didn't include that in the tax rate. So that's kind of a, the budget, but it's it's not going to really be a savings you know, when we don't spend it. Then on page nine, that's uh, fund twelve highway department. Um, there's just a few line items that I've highlighted. Um, electricity, we're a little bit well. We're about 150 percent right now. I didn't look at the detail of that line. I'm not sure as to why. Um, it may be that a bill came in at the end of the year for uh, December that didn't get put back. <laughs> it's not a killing matter, but it's it's a you know it's an aberration, and I'll, I'll look into that. Um, on page ten, engineering. My guess is the three thousand dollars of overspending on engineering had to do with Hubbard Farm. Mm. Culvert, where we needed um, some hydrology studies. And I'll talk to Bill Woodruff. That it's possible that that cost, if it is for that, I might move that into the CIP budget where that project was paid for. <coughs> so that may change. <coughs> I highlighted the sand line. Not to brag that we've only spent $7,300, it's just mm -hmm. we haven't been built for it yet. We'll, we'll, <coughs> we'll be at the 52.5 before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And then at the bottom of the page, again, the debt service is a November expense and the two capital fund is a December expense and that's just a transfer from one town fund to another. <coughs> and then the last page is the library, page 11. Um, we have been doing some uh, telephone upgrades and computer upgrades this year. Uh, I think they had a, a computer that broke that 
they did not plan for when they budgeted and uh, just had to replace that. Um, software licensing, that's it's a $400 difference. The telephone and the internet line, um, we have switched over our telephone system here. We have a, have a telephone system now. The lines are through Comcast. Uh, we spent money with Butler Technology to do the, the changeover. So some of the telephone lines throughout the three operating funds the expenses for that work that Bob did were uh, assigned to the telephone lines, the telephone expense lines. They may actually be higher this year than we budgeted, but going forward, the savings will be pretty considerable on our telephone expense. So we're, our monthly expenses are much lower than they were before, um, and we don't have any long distance uh, expenses any longer. Mm -hmm. So going forward, that will be a savings. Um, <clears throat> and then the debt for the library again, that's, a, that's an end of the year expense. So we're in good shape right now. Um, you know, I never say never because we always have some unexpected things happen, but um, I'm pretty confident at the moment that we're going to be pretty close uh, to our budgeted uh, expenditure level for the free operating funds. I don't see any huge aberrations. Um, you know, in some areas, our revenues are going to be higher than we anticipated. So right now, it's looking like 2018 from an operating expense is a, is a pretty good year. Um, at the next meeting, I'm hopeful that I'll have a final update for you in terms of what we were able to do as far as getting paving projects done um, and sidewalk projects. Um, they pretty much completed the sidewalk on Butler Street, I believe. Uh, next week, they're planning to do the sidewalk here on Winooski Street. Mm -hmm. So We're running out of time for all that stuff. Well, we're running out of time, but we're uh, <coughs> a lot more ahead than we usually do. Yeah, it's been point. an aggressive year. I think I think uh, things have gone pretty well. The weather has been in our favor. And yeah, the weather has been very nice. Yeah. So anyway, uh, if you have questions, I'll be glad to answer them, but that's important. Looks all good to me. Anybody yeah. else? All right. So with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Oh, I did have a question. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> we had talked um, when the village folks came and talked about 51. They came and talked about 51 South Main Street in um, an earlier select board meeting um, recently, and you were going to build maybe look into some options. So we discussed, you know the feasibility of the town buying that building. And I just didn't, I just didn't want to look, I don't know, just some possibilities we talked about at the very end and we just Yeah, left. well, there was so some. So I don't want to necessarily put <coughs> on the spot There tonight. was some conversation about that. There were no motions made. There was no right. direction given to me. Um, <coughs> the trustees or the commissioners of the Edward Ferrari Utility <laughs> District um, they discussed what happened at the select board meeting at one of their recent meetings. And they basically said, well, you know, let's, they batted around the uh, issue of subdividing the property. <coughs> Alyssa Johnson from Revitalizing Waterbury and Jeff Larkin, who uh, is the chairperson of the Waterbury Area Development committee that uh, helps supervise the uh, economic development director, both recommended against the subdividing of the property. They felt that, you know, that down the road, whenever they sold the property for commercial purposes, um, it would be easier to allow somebody to have the whole lot and then 
figure out, negotiate with them if they wanted to try to reserve some parking on mm -hmm. the site as opposed to subdivide it and then <clears throat> you just have this small area. Jeff pointed out, and I think it was um, timely advice, he said, you know, <coughs> the, front, <coughs> the front corner toward the uh, service station of that property is in the is in the 100 year floodplain. And he said, if you subdivide the lot, if you look at the uh -huh. flood regulations that we have, you know, you can't have any, you can't increase, you can't, you can't do anything fill. that's going to, you can't, you can't add fill. Yeah. Um, and he said, if you subdivide the lot, you just have a lot less room to, you know, grade things out to right. deal with that. If you kept the whole lot, they'd be able to maybe yeah, develop the property point. and be able to, you know, meet the flood regulations. So mm -hmm. the commissioners um, ultimately decided that they would retain the property. Uh, at this point, they have no intention of selling it until after the Main Street project is done. But they did um, ask me to submit a permit application to tear the building down. Mm -hmm. They had a, a permit to tear the building down. <laughs> <laughs> it had a two-year window, and then it was renewed for a year, and they didn't do anything, and that's expired, so now they're going back to get a new permit. And I think, right now, they've decided that they're going to get the permit, and they're going to take the building down. They're going to actually spend the money and take the building down. I believe so. Good. And that way, the entire lot will be available for parking during Main Street construction and then that, you know somebody will decide then whether they're going to sell the property or keep it. Yeah the 200,000 they were asking just was over the top for me you know. Uh, of course I had requested that they give it to the town for free. <laughs> And I still hold to those uh, <laughs> conditions, but that's not. Uh, maybe, they, maybe they'll have a change of heart there and meet us somewhere in between. But that's for another day, I guess. Maybe they will. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well, thanks for the update. Sure. All right. Oh, I guess my. So, a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. <laughs> okay. Everybody who wants to get out of here, say aye. 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 aye.